a little television at the time and you had big crowds going to games then, you know, I mean, like I even even looking around this ground here today at the Mardyke, I mean, I made my debut here in the Mardyke and um, I only played there for one season. Um, I'd like to have been playing there much longer than that, but I was only there for one season and um, the atmosphere here was tremendous, you know, before we went to Flower Lodge and of course when we went to Flower Lodge that time it was a big wrench from the Mardyke for people leaving that would support a, a local Cork team which had gone back to Cork United, Cork Athletic. Even Cox Celtic played here, using their home ground one time in Evergreen United. But Cox Everlands had it then from 1957 until 61 and 62. And um, what you had really was a was a boom and a, a, a transitional time really for supporters of soccer going from, from the Mardi to, to Flower Lodge. But it took a few years before before uh, Flower Lodge did take off. And um, but those intervening years to me were enjoyable as well. I mean, you don't always have to be winning stuff to have it make it enjoyable. I think the players that played in, in that spell in League of Ireland football um, really enjoyed what they were doing because um, you weren't paid good money or anything for it but it was just um, there was a certain prestige about the thing mm. and more or less and you were playing against teams in Dublin at the time who were excellent teams I mean Shamrock Rovers at that time were excellent what a full back this fellow is never stops good one across for Dennehy it's there by Dennehy John Lawson with the corner for heads. Floating beautifully. McCuzzy. Marsden. Dennehy again. 2-1. Maya Dennehy has scored the two of them. Lawson. Dennehy. Wigginton running with it by him. Good work again by Dennehy. Lovely ball for Wigginton. How? Why not anymore? It's you know, playing the European competition was possibly the highlights of my, my football life anyway, mm -hmm. being as a player as a manager, because you were, you were encountering the, the, the greats of Europe and you were going there sort of in a, a lot of trepidation about yourself and you were wondering, like, what's going to happen here? Are we going to get hammered here or whatever, you know? That's a good piece of play by Lefebvre. And on his own is Blucher. Four cock hips to one. That's so easy, really, isn't it? Look at the scorer. Hibs must, of course, come at them because with the away leg to face, there's no use being a rear's gone away. And Marsden, most unlucky. It can happen to the best of players. And he's onside, Heikis. A great ball by Netzer. Must be number two, surely. It is number two. A magnificent football pass by Netzer created that. Another run by Vimmer. Really, Hibbs now have been overrun. Started so well, but that pressure is telling now. This is Hankis. Vluka completely unmarked on the right-hand side of the penalty box. And here he is, and not a sinner near him. And it's 3 to nil. Netzer. And that's what football is about. This is Vimmer. What a great football pass. Vimmer. Hankis sells the dummy left foul. Deserved a goal. It's the finest goal we've seen in a long, long, long time. A really fantastic pass by Netzer. Bluka. Hankus. It's classy football. Lefebvre. Oh, it's tremendous football. Yeah, because the manager at the time felt that we should have attacked the, the guys, you know. Attack is right. <laughs> I mean, they did it. Oh, you get over the halfway line, but that was it. And then they counter-attacked you and they hammered you. So when we went out there, we played with a sweeper. And we played a sweeper. Tony Miles went behind the, the, the back four because of myself, Martin Shane and, 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 and uh, John Herrick. And um, at the toss-up out there in that ground, um, the, 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 all the, the, the cameramen stood behind the two captains and the referee while the toss was going on. And when they saw where we were defending, they all congregated behind our goal looking for another avalanche of goals. But, uh, but a couple of minutes to go to half-time, which we scored. And we went in a half-time beating them 1-0. And that was a great memory, you know? I mean, imagine going in, beating the great Borussia and Munch and Gladbach team 1-0 at half-time. It was, it was something else. And uh, they did catch us up in the end. They beat us 2-1 in the end. But it was, it was a tremendous performance by a bunch of lads, you know? And I, like, like, I mentioned in that one, but I mean, we did put up a great performance as well in, um, in, Bayern in Bayern Munich. Munich. 
I would think last year's winning of the league was a tremendous occasion for us, as, as we said ourselves. Mm. Um, the homecoming was wonderful. The winning of the cups in the '72 and '73 uh, would stand out because we we went um, we played something like ten games to win those two cups, and it was nice. It was a nice achievement to have do that. And everybody on side. This is Dennehy. Morrison moving on his left. Maguire gets back. Dennehy gets the cross. November of '88 was a was a, a decision making time because I hadn't much interest in going back into football. I was doing all right and I was enjoying what I was doing, and uh, I was quite happy enough outside of football. I'd go to the odd game and I would see it, and possibly went to more Cox City matches even when I wasn't involved in, than than I than, than I thought I possibly would go to. And I was probably one of the few people along, alongside of maybe Donny Leahy and one or two more who might go, but that was all. There wasn't a lot of people wouldn't go to the matches. But I became familiar with the players because I had them maybe a season two seasons prior to that and I had a good idea what they were like and they were a decent bunch of lads but um, and that month of November of 88 it had it had collapsed to an all-time low at that stage you know I mean it really was in, in, it was really in, in, a, in a bad state and uh, I do remember going to Floor Lodge or going to the training Floor Lodge I do remember going to a, a training session and um, Tony Sullivan took me down one day to a training session they were training down in the old wrestling in Black Rock and uh, on that same evening I came home and I honestly said what am I doing going back there you know there wasn't a player training on the same night. There wasn't even one player trained on the night. And we had a fixture in, in, in Derry to play on the Sunday. And um, what alarmed me mostly about it, and what put me thinking when I went away from the, from the earth line that night, was the number of players missing and the number of players who weren't prepared to travel to play against Derry. You know? I, was appalled. I just couldn't believe that, it, that the, the, the team and the club could go as low as it possibly had at the time. You know, But um, luckily enough, well, um, we went to Derry and uh, we were beaten 4-2, but it was a fairly creditable performance. And I came back a little bit, a little bit happier about the situation. Mm. And we plugged away. And uh, I think the turning point of that season, really, and I think it bears. Uh, I think it, it, it should be spoken about because where to turn at the time wasn't easy. There wasn't finance there. There wasn't anything there to, to do anymore. You had your set of players, and that was it. But I did say, and this was a strange one, that I did say to Donald Madden. Um, look, you're fit enough. Just get a bit more done, maybe in the next two weeks, and I want you to play in a particular game. I didn't mention the game I wanted him to play in. And uh, we were due to play at Cove Ramblers in Cove, and at that given time, Waterford were at the bottom of the table. Cox City were second from bottom, a pint more than Waterford, and Cove Ramblers were two pints ahead of Cox City. So it was a serious situation for months, really, with, with Cove, Cox City, and Waterford down the bottom of the table. And um, we got Donald Madden to play against Cove, and a lot of people laughed when they saw him playing. You know, this fellow, what's this kind of a stroke? You know, but Donald was, Donald Madden was a turning point really of Cox City doing so well afterwards. I consider because when he came into that team on that given day, he did turn into Cove lads the same day because Donald was a very good player, no pace, but had plenty of ability. Could see and read the game pretty well. Good strike with both feet. And I said, well, if he just holds up the ball for us and let let the like of Mick Conroy, Dave Barry, and Patsy Frayne come onto it himself and John Caulfield maybe could cause the problems. And so it happened. And with a couple of minutes to go, Donald pulled the ball down, laid it across the edge of the box, and John Caulfield put it away. And that was the turning point because that particular day we went from being possibly bottom to going above Cove and goal difference, and never looked back for that season. In actual fact, in that season we went on to the cup final against Derry City and were quite unlucky not to win it with the, with the ball that Dale Barry stuck off the inside of the upright and came back. That's a good looking ball this time, Caulfield is in there. 
And Barry with the shot. Yes! No! Off the post! Oh. Well, 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 what a let off for Jerry City. Dave Barry with the left peg. Dalton was beaten and it comes back off the post. Coxity are doing tremendously well. I mean, beating teams on a regular basis. And even go back even a few years ago when we had a run at one particular stage in a season to go. And I don't, I, I, would, I would think that maybe that run we did have one year, I don't think it was ever uh, surpassed by any team in Cork. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm going a bit far on that one. But we went to one stage, something like 20 games unbeaten in the league. Mm. And then we lost and went down again to be unbeaten in another 11. And of course at the end of the season we lost the league, didn't we? I mean, you know. Which wasn't a very nice occasion, was it? But of course you come back uh, to win it and that must have been great relief and great satisfaction in winning uh, at the RDS. Good first touch and a good layoff as well for Buckley in space. But Haylock is back defending. Buckley looking to get the cross in, he does so and Morley's head! And he scores! His 20th goal of the season. So Phil Harrington with a long kick out. Met by Paul Bannon, Morley's dummy and Barry is true. A chance here for the second goal for City and it's in! Dave Barry has scored! So John Caulfield with the throw for Jerry McCabe. He's been so involved today, McCabe. Prospects maybe here for Cork City. Buckley again feeds McCabe. And that's a ball aimed at Paul Bannon. And a real chance here. Morley, it's in! Cork City are back in front. But it was a great day, and particularly it was a great day for supporters. And everybody connected with the club, more than myself, you know I mean? We're there and we're in the thick of it, and that's okay, because you're in there and you have responsibility for what you're doing. There is, a, there is a nice sense of achievement for us, all right. Mm. But I felt on the outside it was tremendous for the club itself, mm. for the spectators in general, and for the supporters who were right around the, the club for the last couple of seasons, you know. Mm. That's, that was the, the satisfaction I actually got from it. Um, and I suppose bringing the trophy back to Cork for the first time in, in something, what was it, 20, 19, 20 19 years, years or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, was, it was long overdue, wasn't it?